In this video, we're going to look at pneumonia, which is the infection as well as the inflammation of the lungs. So here is a person with pneumonia. Signs and symptoms of pneumonia include malaise, confusion, fever and chills, rigor, tachycardia, tachynea or dyspnea, cough can be productive, vomiting as well as diarrhea. The risk factors for pneumonia are old uh, patients or people older than 65 year, uh, years of age, smokers uh, being malnourished, having an underlying lung disease, being immunocompromised, certain medications contribute to pneumonia, as well as a recent respiratory infection also uh, is a risk factor. Before looking at the pathophysiology of pneumonia, let us first look at the function of the lungs and the normal defense mechanisms within the lungs. So here is the lung and most distal end um, that make up the lungs are the alveoli. Here we are cutting a section of the alveolus with its terminal bronchial. Oxygen is moving in and carbon dioxide is exhaled out. There is mucus lining the bronchioles. The lower respiratory tract is sterile to commensal organisms as well as any organisms. We do have microorganisms residing in the upper respiratory tract, however. Within some alveoli, there are ma alveolar macrophages which help keep the area sterile. If we look at the trachea and bronchus, we see they are made up of special ciliated columnar epithelial cells. There are also goblet cells around the respiratory, um, lining the respiratory tract, which secrete mucus. The mucus also contain um, antibodies, IgA, which help eliminate microorganisms. IgA antibodies are part of the mucosal immune system. Now, interestingly, the ciliated epithelial cells um, actually are special because they make, they make up what's called the mucociliary escalator. So what they do is essentially the bad stuff can be brushed up like so uh, through the use of the mucociliary escalator. escalator. So if we were to summarize the, um, our pulmonary defense mechanisms, they include the cough reflex, the mucociliary apparatus, um, the alveolar macrophages, mucus secretions, IgA antibodies, as well as the microflora of the upper respiratory tract and the nose hairs, our nose hairs, and mouth acidity if you want to include that as well. So these pulmonary defenses help us fight off microorganisms, bad ones, every day. Yes, we do have microorganisms living within our um, respiratory tract, but these guys are commensals. They do no harm unless you are immunocompromised or unless they just grow wild, out of control. Regardless, again, the lung defenses help protect us. Problems or deficiency in these defenses can make people more susceptible to lung infection, such as pneumonia. Now, the causative agents of pneumonia, in summary, can be divided uh, to bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Fungi are less common, um, and fungal pneumonia is usually more often seen in those who are immunocompromised. Bacteria is the most prevalent cause of pneumonia, some major bacteria, causative bacteria, include strep pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, legionella pneumonia, staphylococcus aureus, and mycoplasma species. Viruses include the influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, and cytomegaly virus. Okay, so those are some examples of the big players in pneumonia, the big causative agents in pneumonia. Again, these guys are more likely to cause infection of the lung when there is a problem in the pulmonary defenses or if the person is immunocompromised for that matter. So let us look at, um, at a lung with pneumonia. So a person can have personal and, and environmental risk factors which predispose them to having pneumonia. Um, or the causative agent, the microbes, can have special virulent factors that allows them to cause pneumonia. So it can be two-way. Before looking at a lung that has pneumonia, let us look at um, an impaired pulmonary defense, which makes a person more susceptible to pneumonia. 
So here I'm just drawing the lungs again, the alveolar and the terminal bronchioles. So impaired pulmonary defense include loss of the cough re reflex as seen in coma, um, use of anesthetic. Um, injur injured mucociliary apparatus due to smoking. Decrease in alveolar ma macrophages from, uh, from alcohol and smoking. Pulmonary congestion, edema, and accumulation of secretions such as in cystic fibrosis. Again, these are examples of impaired pulmonary defenses, which again makes one more susceptible to lung infections. Okay, so now let's look at quickly um, how these the different causative agents that we talked about actually causes pneumonia. So we look at mainly bacterial, viral, and fungi, which can enter, infect the respiratory tract through um, through inhalation of these uh, foreign particles, for example. So they enter the lungs. Now let's look at each one of these um, individually. So let's begin with bacterial. So the bacteria enters the distal part of the alveolar, uh, the respiratory tract, which is the alveoli. So here we have an alveoli. We have macrophages residing, if you remember, and here are the capillaries. So the bacteria enters the alveoli and it essentially initiates an immune response. The macrophages residing here will recognize the bacteria and begin secreting cytokines, including TNF-alpha and interleukin-1. Essentially, cytokines result in many things, mainly vasodilation of the of vessels, as well as increasing vascular permeability. Now, this will actually result in fluid uh, shifting from the vascular space into the, um, al the alveoli, and, and thus will lead to congestion. So that was bacterial pneumonia. Now let's look at viral, which is quite kind of similar. Here again, we have the alveoli, we have the macrophages residing in it, and we have the capillaries here. So the viral particles actually infect uh, the respiratory cells itself. And so this virus here, if we zoom in, it will infect this respiratory cell and it will release its genetic material within the cell. The genetic material of the virus, it uses uh, the, the host's proteins and stuff to essentially replicate. And, and it what it essentially creates is many more new viral particles. And with many more new viral particles, this essentially causes the cell, uh, the respiratory cell to lice, releasing these newly formed viral particles. So if this happens within the alveoli, you get cellular debris because of the dead cell. And this will initiate again an immune response. The macrophages here will release cytokines, which will increase Vaso, which will cause vasodilation, increase in vascular permeability, resulting in congestion. So, so that was bacterial and viral. Lastly, let's look at fungal. So fungal pneumonia is kind of different. So the spores from fungi, it, we, we inhale it or it gets within into our lungs somehow and it travels down the alveoli as we see. And essentially it will, the environment here allows, allows it to, um, to grow and it can grow into what's known as a fungal ball. And a fungal ball is essentially, you have fungus, you have mucus, and you have cellular debris, all into this big ball. And this is what you can see in, um, in, a, in, in imaging, this fungal ball. Um, further, the, the fungi can actually uh, spread. It can go into the, vascul the vasculature and uh, disseminate. It can spread, causing systemic effect, which is very, very uh, uh, life-threatening. So I hope you understood. That was just a quick overview of um, how these different causative agents um, can lead to pneumonia. Now let's go back to the main diagram and see, um, talk more about the infected lung. So in a lung infection that is pneumonia, we see fluid-filled alveoli. We see narrowing of the airways, bronchoconstriction, and increase in mucus secretion. The fluid-filled alveoli is... Um, is known as congestion. In radiological terms, in radiography, it's called consolidation and usually occupies a lobe of a lung. It occupies a lobe because what happens is that the fluid-filled alveoli spreads back, it backflows, causing fluid to flow to other alveoli and so, um, and so on until the consolidation, the congestion occupies the whole lobe. If we were to define consolidation, it is the process that fills essentially alveoli with fluid pus blood cells resulting in lobar diffuse opacity. 
So again, consolidation is a radiological term. Um, it's basically congestion. Smoking is a major risk factor for pneumonia. If we see the trachea here, where we have we find normal, where we normally find ciliated columnar epithelial cells, smoking actually damages the cilia and so disrupts the mucociliary escalator, which is normally very important for the pulmonary defense. And there's also an increase in muco, mucus secretion as a result of smoking. Okay, so pneumonia can be classified or categorized into so many different types. One way it can be categorized is into the areas of lung in, affected. Pneumonia can affect one lobe. This pneumonia is called lobar pneumonia. In lobar pneumonia, we see consolidation of a lobe. Or pneumonia can affect patches throughout the respiratory tract. This is called bronchopneumonia. There is also multilobar pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia, which I have not added here for simplicity. So the two types we will look at are lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. Let us look at lobar pneumonia first. So again, if we were to look at the alveoli, we see fluid-filled spaces that move from alveoli to alveoli until it occupies the whole lobe, essentially. Lobar pneumonia affects, uh, affects a section of a lobe of the lung. It starts distally and spreads throughout the, the lobe of the lung. There is a staging for lobar pneumonia, and it can be divided into four stages. First is congestion, red hepatization, gray hepatization, and resolution. So congestion is congestion. Red hepatization is a red liver type appearance. Gray is a gray type appearance in pathological terms. And then resolution is just, it resolves. So these are essentially staging of lobar pneumonia based on pathological, uh, based on a pathological view. So if we were to do a physical examination on a patient who has consolidated lobe, so congested, congested lung, we would most likely find the following things. A decrease in chest expansion on the affected side. That side of the lung um, consol consolidation is dull to percussion. And we can also hear bronchial breath sounds um, and also include uh, vocal resonance. Now let us look at bronchopneumonia. As we know, it affects patches throughout the lungs, starting with the bronchioles, hence the name bronchopneumonia. So the problem of congestion begins from the bronchioles and moves towards the alveoli. So whereas lobar pneumonia begins alveoli and moves proximally, bronchopneumonia begins proximally and then moves distally towards the alveoli. Bronchopneumonia affects patches throughout both lungs. Infection spread along airways and finally reaches distal areas. So that was where that was um, looking at uh, lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia, which are which are two types of pneumonia based on the areas of lung affected. So now we will look at how we can assess the severity of a person, a patient with pneumonia, and when to hospitalize them. So when to hospitalize a patient. We'll be specifically looking at community-acquired pneumonia, but it can be, honestly, any type of pneumonia, I think. So when to hospitalize patients, we use a score called the CURB-65, or CORB, C-O-R-B, in Australia, or PSI. We'll be looking at CURB-65, and each of these letters stand for something we, we, we are trying to find. So C is for confusion. U is for urea over 7 millimoles per liter. R is for respiratory alkalosis. And B is blood pressure lower than 90 systole. In Australia, we use CORB. So it's the same thing, confusion. But instead of urea, we use oxygen less than 90%, so hypoxemia. R is for respiratory rate greater than 30, so tachypneic. And blood pressure is the same. So each one of these are given a score of one point. 
So if we tally up these points, and if it is greater than two, the patient needs to be hospitalized. That's basically it. Another factor to consider, consider is if the patient is older than 65. This would indicate the patient would um, most likely need hospitalization.